What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 24 and we are back with the season finale today with the two cup finals with Bournemouth after finishing an 8th in the Premier League. Uh, yeah, heading into today uh, we've got the FA Cup final against Manchester United to try and retain the trophy won last season and make it back to back FA Cups but also in our debut year in Europe we've got the Europa League final where a win here wouldn't just give us our first ever European honour, but put us in a challenging final for next season as well. If we're going to do that, though, we need to come through AC Milan, who are champions of this Serie A, and of course a five-star team in their right. So two cup finals, and this is the first. Let's dive straight into it. So first of the two finals, and it is indeed the Europa League final, as we face Milan in Amsterdam at the Johan Cruyff Arena. And I've got to say, heading into this one here, Yes, we've done brilliantly to reach the final. Yes, we'd love to come away with the silverware too, but I would say we are slight underdogs for this one here against the great Italians. They're lining up in a 4-3-3 with a 90-rated mic between the sticks and a bat for his Terraciano, Gabriel De Sassi, and Theo Hernandez as well. The midfield trio is Benesis supporting Gabri Vega and Reinders, and the front three is Chuck Weze on the right, Jonathan David through the middle, and 91 overall Rafael Liao on the left. The first of the two cup finals, it's Milan in the Europa League final as going to pull off the upset and we're born with first ever European honour. Come on you cherries. Gabriel to Theo Hernandez, 88 overall now. As Reinders is sent down left hand side here, holds off Matty Cash, not once but twice. Gets it back off Theo, and there's Rafael Leal. A little bit of space for the line. Rolls it inside. Jonathan David shot blocked. It will drop on the edge. Another shot blocked, and still not clear. Now it's got in the end, just hoofs it away. Listen, I love to pass out from the back at every single opportunity, but there are going to be times tonight, I'm sure, where the best strategy is just get it as far away from the goal as possible. Coming to big blocks, still 0 0, but Milan starting off strong as we expected. It's a lovely ball through that. Now Jonathan David pops it out wide. There's Samuel. Great first touch. Lovely step over too. And the out. Oh, the ball. Jonathan David. Excellent save. We're Andre Lunin. And Henry just can't prevent the corner. Milan getting a shot away on target this time. But Andre Lunin to the rescue as the Ukrainian withstands the pressure. Still 0-0. And the header is away from the corner. It will drop to Reinders. There's Samuel. Great block by Cash and cleared. It's, it's all Milan in the opening half an hour. It's brilliant from Pedro da. Solanke. Alex Scott saved by Mike. First sight of the Milan goal. But pushed away by the French international. Oh, there's, there's definitely going to be a few goals tonight for sure. Half an hour in, still 0-0. But both teams getting chances. Both goalkeepers forced into early saves. How long is it going to be before that deadlock is finally broken? I mean, I'm now penned a little bit 33 minutes in. We've withstood an early storm. And now we're starting to get some chances ourselves. We're good from corners. Salanke heads just over. Well, I say just over. Well over the bar. But an excellent first 33 minutes here. And even first half this, it was Milan flying out of the block. Since then, we've got a foothold, we've got some chances ourselves. But, oh, what a save, Lunin on Gabri Vega once again. This is going to be a game, I feel, where both goalkeepers are going to be earning their bread. And it might need to be a, uh, a screamer or a moment of magic to beat either the Ukrainian or the French international, because both have made great starts here tonight with key saves. Liao, David, shot blocked by Vinicius and cleared away. Still 0-0, heading into the break. Oh no, oh my god, that could have gone anywhere. Zaborni's deflection, sees it dig into the turf. And go over the bar. I swear I thought I was going to leave such a massive divot on the turf after the deflection. As it's still 0-0. How? I don't really know, but it is. What a first half in Amsterdam. And somehow it remains goal. A second half to play, but I don't think it will for much longer. And for Milan, have just taken off Reinders. It's Benesowitz in the corner, it's headed away, and on comes Leon Goretzka, the, the German. Liao, dispossessed, and Zabani and Adams will get it away. Well done. And we'll, okay, play Vaj, play draft, play Vaj. There we go, there we go, there we go. Score surely! Yes, come on! AC Milan mind! Alex Scott 
Jim's bottom of the lead with half an hour to go. Brilliantly played counter and also, can I say, brilliantly played advantage by the referee. Sometimes they can be a bit whistle happy and blow too quickly, but that moment there only came about by the referee allowing us to play the advantage, working from right to left and then move forward. Alex Scott beats Mike and bottom of lead in Amsterdam. 30 to play and 30 minutes separating us from a European honour. Chuck weighs it, oh what a touch. Jockey, 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 jockey. Samuel, Jonathan David, oh no, 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 no. Instantly replies for Milan. Just got the wrong side of him with Vinny, I think it was. And it's bent in. That's, it's fine, I mean to be fair, oh, that's a strong tackle that. It's been a very even contest to be fair. But, okay, the, the, the key now is don't let momentum shift. Great tackle, Vinny. Don't let momentum shift. 1-1, one, one, equaliser for Milan. We're levelling Amsterdam instantly. And now they are looking to garner momentum. Now they are looking to take control of this game. Now they are looking to show their pedigree. Great block by Benison. Vinny tries to clear. Can't do so. He'll draw to Rafael Liao. Nods on for himself. Gets around Matty Cash down left-hand side. Can he win the boys in the middle? Or step inside himself? Still Liao. Excellent tackle. And cleared away by Bournemouth. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And that's a ref. ref, ref come on, come on, come on. That's going to be at least a booking, surely. It's going to be at least a booking. And it is indeed. I'll tell you what. It's getting chippy out there. It's getting chippy. What a final this has been. 10 on the clock, and both teams are gearing up for an extra half an hour, and to be fair, what has been a brilliant final, and I say it all the time, but these are my favourite games to play, man, as nice as it is to dominate and win 4-0 or whatever, these are the best, man, so tense, Noah Okafor off the bench, jockeying, back to Jonathan David, a Canadian, steps round Vinicius and finds Ishmael, there's Goretzka, there's Liao, Goretzka, off the bench, to maybe win it for Milan. With a ruthless finish past Lunin. AC Milan lead in the final. 1-2 with Rafael. Brilliant finish. And AC Milan are in front. I think that is going to do it. And Milan have came from behind to win the Europa League. Oh, is that a foul? It is indeed. I thought for a second there we were going to have one... Last chance. But Milan aren't one of the greatest European sides of all time for nothing. They've shown their pedigree. They've shown their experience. They've shown their nerve. And they've come from behind to win it. I don't think it's undeserved at all. I think it was an even tie. And possibly they were slightly better on the night. But from a goal down to win it by one, AC Milan run out 2-1 winners in the Netherlands. Bournemouth's debut European season. What a run all the way to the final. But it ends in tears in Amsterdam. Yeah, I think Milan were the better team on the night. And you'll see the stats in a moment. They back that up as well. Although not as one-sided as I think they make out. But even so, um, yeah, Milan come through and win it. And I think they were the better team over the course of 90 minutes as well. Oh, just gutting to lose the thought For sure we were going into extra time. But sadly, just wasn't to be. And I often say this, man. When you've failed an objective and it hurts and it stings and it really burns... You just got to take the lessons from that loss and move on to the next one. AC Milan running out as winners, and I can't be too annoyed when you look at the stats as well. Okay, all right, Europa League final lost, EFL Cup final lost, two lost in a row, and now we go into the FA Cup final, having to pick ourselves up heading into the game against Manchester United at Wembley. I mean, if we lose this one, it's going to be a really, really bitter end to the season. No doubt about that. So, do you know what? Let's just jump straight into it. Let's just jump straight into it. FA Cup final against Manchester United. 
as we try and put it right at a third time of asking in our third final this season. A late loss in a European final with tired legs and underdogs heading into a game in three days time. Yup, the pressure has never been more intense on Bournemouth as we aim to end the season with a trophy and not end with no silverware. Heading into the game at Wembley against Manchester United, the Red Devils are lining up in a 4-2-3-1 with Onana between the sticks and the back four being on now. Martinez, Vicario, Tomori, Jared Brantway and Fran Garcia. The DM duo is Casemiro and Haidara with Anthony on the right, Sancho on the left and Bruno Fernandes supporting Veteran striker Callum Wilson now leading the line up top as the former Cherry tries to get revenge on his former club. Final game of the season, FA Cup final, aiming to retain it and not end trophyless this season. Huge pressure at Wembley. Come on, you Cherries. Manchester United finishing in sixth this season in the Premier League. And uh, just like us, no, no other honours in, in either the Cup or, or in a European competition. And so both teams knowing that if they don't win this game, they'll end the season without silverware. And for Bournemouth again, how how bad is that going to sting as Lunin makes a great save there? No, we've had three finals and lost them all. And if you really... Hang on. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. NATO! Come on! What I was going to say is, you really want to nitpick, you could say four, including the Community Shield, but come on! Pidjo Nato fires Bournemouth in front, but we led in Amsterdam on Wednesday night and lost. So, taking nothing for granted. Pedro Nato with the early opener, but it's only minute nine. There's a long, long way to go here at Wembley. This game started off at an absolutely frenetic pace. Oof. So we're still leading by one. Luna was forced into an early save. Since then, though, no, we've kept my strike quiet. That's really well done, though. And I see Solan give. I can't get it to him. So Nate says, okay, I'll step in myself. I'll shoot myself. And Tamori makes the block. And that's a booking for an earlier incident. Corner, though, we'll take it. Just smashed it near post. And a chance here from this set piece. We're good from corners, especially with Solanke in the middle. Six minutes before the break, Dominic Solanke makes it Manchester United nil, Bournemouth 2. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay calm. Fernandez trying to get around Matty, who jockeys really well. There's Fred Garcia and Cash is there, went in and... Okay, calm, 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 that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Oh my god. I mean, I'm saying it's calm. It really isn't. As Hidara wins it back. Is there one last chance? No, we'll go backwards. And that will do it. A little nervy towards the end. But we're leading by two at the break. 45 minutes away from back-to-back -back FA Cup. Stay tight defensively and it's ours again. Hidara drives forward. And they really need a goal now. With Arnold Martinez down the right. Pegging it in. Anthony. Hydara, we puts it wide. And we're almost there. 20 minutes to go. We are almost there. Go on, Nacho for Manchester United. They're, they're coming. They're coming. Mason Greenwood denied by Lunin. And turned behind for a corner. As we still lead by two. As Fernandez heads in the corner and does give them a glimmer. It was coming. It was coming. Greenwood shot turned behind for a corner, headed in by Bruno Fernandes, and it's 2-1. Right, I'm tightening them up the defence, man. I'm, I'm bringing an extra defender. Final chance for Manchester United. Jaden Sancho, they've got to get it forward. They've got to get it forward. Oh, my God, I can't do this. Corner, Manchester United, final second. Anthony rallying the fans. This is it. Defend this, and the FA Cup is ours. Concede, and it's extra time. In it goes. Cash gets up. It's up in the air. It's cleared by Solanke. Matty gets up again, and that's it. It's over. Referee blows for full time, and Bournemouth survive. The onslaught of attacks from the Red Devils in the end isn't enough. Bournemouth hang on, and thank the Lord for that. Oh. Back to back FA Cups. And we don't end trophyless. Bournemouth retain the FA Cup.
by the skin of their teeth. Come on! Oh my goodness gracious me, well unlike the game on Wednesday night, I, I feel as though this was a lot more even and, and really could have gone either way. And in the end, it just came down to who was more clinical. And the two goals in the first half ensured we would just about hold on. The game kind of changed in the second half. Ten Hag made a couple of changes, brought on Garnacho on Greenwood and I really struggled against both of them. But thankfully in the end, just about withstood the pressure and held on for the win so so tight so so tense and right at the end i thought for sure they were going to level it but instead we hold on we get the win and it is back to back fa cups for bournemouth as we join an elite group of clubs that have managed to retain it we won it last year we win it again we don't end trophyless i i don't think i've ever had a season where I've lost three straight finals. I, I don't think I've ever had a season where I've done that, where I've lost three finals. But we were very close <laughs> to, if not losing this one, then at least going into extra time. <laughs> Thank goodness for that, though. But, but Bournemouth retain it, and we don't end trophy. And again, crucially as well, crucially, that's, a, that's for the first time ever, that's a very apt interview question with, with us hanging on towards the end there. Normally, normally it's like, you know, you win 4 and it was like, so a close game then? Well, not really, Mr. Interviewer. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, sorry, I lost, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, well, crucially, didn't really mention this, but had we not won this, we wouldn't be in Europe next season because we finished in eighth place. Instead, not only do we end with silverware, but we also qualify for next year's Europa League as well. Oh, get in. And so to end the season off, what we'll do is take one look at the other competitions this season, where, of course, after Arsenal won the Carabao Cup, which we knew uh, after they beat us uh, in the final 3-1 early this season, the Conference League was won by TSG Hoffenheim, beating Club Bruges in the final 2-1. And obviously Milan won the Europa League, as you saw earlier, beating us in the final. But as for the Champions League, uh, a real quick look at the, uh, the full groups here. Look at that for Group B, by the way. Slavia Prague managing to make it through with uh, Bayern finishing bottom. How about that? But uh, Group C saw Real Madrid and Leipzig qualify. Group D, Inter and Liverpool. Uh, Group E, Roma and Benfica. Group F, Arsenal and Atletico. Group G, Juventus and Manchester City. And Group H, Newcastle United and Napoli. And uh, as for the knockout rounds as well, as you'll see in the end, it was a final between Dortmund and PSG and Kylian Mbappe gets it for PSG 4-2 in the Champions League final for PSG. As for the other leagues around the world starting with the EFL well Sheffield United and Luton Town are back in the Premier League and the players will be Middlesbrough, Fulham, Blackburn Rovers and Southampton uh, in this year's second tier in England and as for League One Barnsley and Portsmouth the top two with the playoffs being Rotherham United, Wigan Athletic, Blackpool and uh, Derby County in the third tier this season. And as for League Two, MK Don, Stoncaster and Swindon up automatically with the playoffs being Harrogate Town, Forest Green Rovers, Cambridge United and uh, Fleetwood Town in League Two this season. PSG might have won the Champions League, but not League Earn, a rare season where they don't. Monaco finishing above them by a single point to pit them and win the French top tier. Second year in a row, Bayern have not been champions of the Bundesliga. Bayern Leverkusen, six clear to win it once again. Back to back for them now with uh, Bayern, Dortmund and Leipzig in the top four with Wolfsburg in fifth in the German top tier. Touched on this earlier, but uh, AC Milan were indeed Serie A champions alongside the Europa League winners as well with Juve, Inter and Napoli wrapping up the top four in Italy's top tier. PSV, Eredivisie champions doing undefeated. Are we going to see that in real life as well? Finishing nine clear of Ajax to win the Dutch top tier this season. Porto, champions of the Liga Portugal with Benfica in second and Sporting in third in Portugal's top tier. And as for the Scottish Premier League, was it Aberdeen again? No, Celtic top hearts this time though, splitting the uh, the old firm. I must say, I'm, I'm starting to notice, maybe it's a new patch, I don't know, but I am starting to notice the old firm. Normally it's always a 1-2, but now there's a lot of splits happening. Celtic might have been top of the tree after the first phase, but 
Even so, this year, Hearts in second. Interesting. And as for La Liga, uh, Real Madrid finishing 11 clear of Atletico with Barca in third and Villarreal in fourth in Spain's top tier this season. As for the Turkish Super League, well, we knocked him out of the Europa League in the semis, but Galatasaray did top the Turkish Super League with Fenerbahce in second and Besiktas in third. And as always, we're then with the MLS, uh, which has sort of just begun right now with both conferences, the East and the West. Uh, New England, Revolution are four clear of New York City in second, Colorado Rapids in third, and Minnesota uh, are in fourth as the MLS has just started getting underway. And so to end the season, we will take one final look at the team as we end our third year at the Vitality. And I have to say as well, on the back of winning back-to-back -back FA Cups and getting to the Europa League final as well, I do wonder if now is the right time to leave Dorset and go elsewhere to a bigger club. As we said right back at the end, uh, right back at the start, I should say, of season one, this save... The primary element to it is realism. And I would say right now, I think personally we've taken Bournemouth as far as we should take them realistically. It's been an absolute blast building this team. I've really, really enjoyed it. We've brought in some fantastic young players. We've assembled a really, really nice core here. We've developed the young talents that Bournemouth already have. But I would say now after three years... And what's it now? Four finals? Four finals in these two years. Winning two and losing two. Having a European final. Keeping Bournemouth in Europe as well. We might have taken a step back in the league this season, finishing an eight. But keeping Bournemouth in Europe by winning the FA Cup. Winning it back to back. I would say personally, I think this team now has got to as good as realistically as it probably could within this time frame. And I would say now, as a young manager, proving himself, winning two major honours in two years... Yeah, I think the big clubs are going to start coming knocking for me now. Just like Liverpool when they got Brendan Rodgers from Swansea or Chelsea when they got Graham Potter from Brighton. Yeah, I think it's possibly time now to think about jumping to a bigger club for season four onwards. Developing the manager's career as well as moving on to a bigger club as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with the team though. You know, I must say three, three seasons and I'm so, so pleased with how we built this side. You know, the, the, the players we brought in that were sublime since coming in, such as obviously Vinicius, such as Matthew, such as Pedro as well, but also the players we developed here, such as Alex Scott, such as Kirk Hedge. You know, we developed such a great core here with the Cherries. And I'm really pleased with what we did in three seasons. But again, realistically, I would say, and that's the whole point of this save. It's all about trying to maintain that realism for as much as we can. Oh, friend group, I don't want to leave him, no. I don't want to leave Morton. Um, I, I, I would say, I would say personally, we've done about as much as we possibly should. As Lee Wynn has grown eight ratings in one year in the era of these. Oh, uh, we'll keep an eye on him, even if we do leave in the summer. But I have to say, for the three years here with Wolf, it's been an absolute blast, man. And, and I want to say thank you so much for all the support on the save so far. It's been brilliant. I'm really, really enjoying this. Every year we do a realistic career mode. Since I started doing them a couple of years ago, they've, they've just gone down so well. You know, so, so well from you guys. And I know it's hard to maintain realism. I know it's hard to keep it going for, well, really past one season, to be honest, in a career mode save. But... I do my best. That's all That's all I can do. Sometimes I'll get it wrong. Sometimes I'll make a signing. Sometimes I'll sell a player. And you guys might think, oh, not too sure about that, Doxy boy. I wouldn't have done that myself. I'm not sure that's realistic. But I can only do my best. And I do always try my best. That's the thing. I might get it wrong on occasion. But I do always try my best. And I think with, with the save so far and what we've done, yeah, I think we're bordering on right now what is the, the edge of what will be considered realistic in a certain time frame. We've sort of built the team up, kind of similar to how our South, South Coast rivals Brighton have done in the years there under Potter and now the Zerbi as well. But I would say personally, we're taking this team as far as we can go. I'm ready for the next challenge and I'm looking forward to it as well. So yeah, it's it's been a blast, man. Three great years with both. Oh wow, Hugo Gillet growing 10 ratings at the, uh, the Rico. I want to say again, thank you for all the support on the first three seasons. It's been fantastic. But whilst our time at Bournemouth, I believe, is coming to an end, our time in the save definitely hasn't. And the manager, Doxy Boy, is ready for his next challenge. And I'm really looking forward to it as well. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching uh, Season 3, guys. Dominic Solanke, look at this, by the way. 57 games, 29 goals and 21 assists. Six goals in five in the FA Cup, including the dagger in the final. Or what, in the end, I suppose, was the winner after we won 2-1. Goodness gracious, man, oh man, I made this guy captain. I think it's safe to say I made the right decision. Leading by example, no doubt about that. 
Yeah, thank you so much, guys. It's been a blast, this save. I'm really, really enjoying it. And no plans to stop just yet. So thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. And I cannot wait for our next challenge, moving into Season 4 of a brand new club. Who it will be, I don't know, but we'll find out in the next episode of a brand new season guys much love to each and every one of you as always thank you so much for all the love and support on the first three seasons of the cherries but now we leave them behind with their first two major honors in club history edging them into history as being one of very few teams that have retained an fa cup and keeping them in europe for what will be a second straight season as well i've done a tremendous job we've done a tremendous job and now it's time to spread our wings and go elsewhere. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the season and the finale, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for a brand new season, a brand new club in the realistic career mode as we take the next step in our career very soon.